Uh, hello, uh, my name is Kagolo Ivan and I'm going to be uh, taking you through um, the maternal and reproductive health situation in Uganda. I uh, will be using data from uh, the Minister of Health is taking a working group on maternal and child health. This is data that was looking at uh, the performance uh, around July 2023 and June 2024. Uh, the outline of this presentation has um, family planning, looks at antenatal services. It also looks at institutional deliveries. We also want to understand the kind of care that uh, mothers receive after delivery. And then also look at the mortality rates. So when you look at uh, the family planning access, uh, the performance is not um, uh, very much um, exciting. Because when you look at uh, data that is looking at July and September, you realize that the age group of uh, 10 to 19 still has low performance in regarding family planning services. And then those that are between 20 to 24, uh, and then those that are above 25. So looks like uh, the picture painted here, those that are above 25 years seem to have uh, a fairly better performance in terms of access to family planning services. So one in five um, uh, young people are actually accessing family planning services in the age bracket of 19 and below. However, when you look at the data on regional variations, you realize that Wukedi and Lango have high proportions, but the rest of the regions are lagging behind. When you look at uh, the family planning methods that people are accessing, you realize that uh, uh, people are going for condoms, they are also going for injectable subcutaneous, and then they are also going for the injectable uh, IEM injection. The implants and the pills and the IUDs, those are actually following behind. So. The access mix is largely dominated by the short-term methods, which are basically injectables and condoms. So there is also a high preference for the cyanopress over the depot provider. So it is very important that you also understand that there is a growing expansion for implants. People look like they are getting to start trusting implants for family planning. So when you look at antenatal attendance, still going by age groups, attendance seems to be high in the age group of 25 and above. Those that are below 19 are also uh, not attending A and C. So this indicator measures the proportion of mothers that are growing. And when you look at it, about 18% of these mothers that go for A and C services are are also aged 19 years and below. So uh, the age group of 19 years and below seems to have um, uh, low access to antenatal uh, services. So in terms of performance, Langmo, Bukeda and Bugisu also seem to be a leading uh, in terms of these age groups of 19 years and below that are going for antenatal services. So when you look at the percentage of the pregnant women who received within this period two or more doses of IPTP while attending ANC. This is basically a prophylaxis uh, for for um, malaria that is given over the whole duration of pregnancy. So uh, it's given once every trimester. So we are looking at all the three, but most especially looking at the third one, the final one, which is IPT3. You realize that uh, we are still performing below target. The target is 77%. So we need to find out why uh, there is low performance. When you look at the data, you also realize around December and January, the performance was low. So I don't know if it was because of the uh, festive season or because mothers were going back to school to take their children. But we need to find out why specifically December and January, the numbers were very low. So um, when you look at uh, the prevalence of malaria in pregnancy, remember IPT is meant to uh, prevent malaria in pregnancy. Uh, the national average is of um, is at six percent, 
which actually means that there is low coverage, basically indicating that we are going to have a high rate of malaria. Mothers are not going for IPT. Basically, mothers are going to end up with big numbers regarding malaria. So when you look at pregnant women who received, uh, there is an ultrasound scan that is done during the ANC visit to look at uh, position of the baby, health of the baby, development. You realize that about 32% actually had this scan done during ANC visits. So, so and the book is still they continue to lag behind in terms of performance. So mothers are not actually having the scan. If 32% are the only women that actually get to know how the baby is in terms of development, that is not a very good position uh, to be in. Because this is going to encourage a lot of uh, complications that would otherwise be um, avoided. But uh, that's the number, because the data uh, doesn't lie. When you look at the mothers who are actually going to deliver from a facility or an institution, you also realize that about 65% of the mothers are actually delivering at a health facility. So it's 64, 64, 66, it's averaged at 65%, which is not a very bad number. So Kampala has the highest proportion of deliveries conducted at facility, but then deliveries at institution are lowest in the south central part of Uganda. So this means people in that region are not actually going. Probably they are delivering from home or they are delivering from TBA is which actually poses risks of complications and emergencies. When you look at uh, caesarean section rates, uh, WHO recommends that the rate should be less than 15%. 15%. So when you look at the numbers, uh, the rates were 13, July, they come to January, they went around 14, and then June, June were around 14. So it's around high in January oh, yeah. and April, and then June. But the risk rates are noted um, to be very uh, prevalent in Kampala and also Chigezi North and Central and South Central. So Kampala is looking at 32%, uh, Chigezi is around 18 and then you look at Ankoli and North Central, those are around 18 and 17 respectively. So this rate shouldn't be above 15 as recommended by World Health Organization. So cesarean section rates basically should be controlled, but that's the picture. Looking at mortality, maternal deaths, we're looking at 100,000 uh, numbers uh, per health facility deliveries. The national average is about 300 maternal deaths reported per quarter. So every about three months, we are losing about 300 mothers, which is about 100 every uh, every month, which is about about 10 every day. So this is not a very good number. And Kampala still has the highest record across all the quarter. So mothers are dying. Mothers are dying. And this is not a very good picture, considering the times that we live in. But I iterate among those children that have been hospitalized but are also less than five years of age. Uh, you realize that um, the number of deaths of those children uh, hospitalized uh, under five years of age in a given period, about 1.3, 1.1, 1.2, which is actually um, something you could compare with the total number of hospitalized children for the same period. So if uh, if we had about 1,263 children hospitalized in July and then we lost 1.1%, and then these numbers kept going up, August, September, and then went back down to November, December, and then January they shot up. May they also went up. Yes, something is uh, indeed not very, very well. When you look at uh, the key issues that this data presents, you realize that there is low uptake of um, uh, postnatal family planning, which basically works. Uh, again, it's the expected benefit. Mothers are ending up producing and uh, getting unwanted pregnancies simply because they are not cancelled on uh, post uh, NATO family planning. Then there is also late initiation of ANC because the first trimester uh, where first ANC should be is also still low. 
So mothers need to be um, uh, made aware that it's important to go for ANC as soon as the first trimester. So there's also low coverage on some ANC interventions. We saw that people are not taking the malaria prevention treatment. The scan is not also happening. And then the screening for anemia was also not there. So there's regional variation. That is also something that came out. You realize that, especially on institutional births, the average is about 64% around South Central. And that is not something that you can just ignore. So the C-sections are still higher at referral sites. But then there are health facilities with unacceptably high rates. You need to make an audit and find out why are they happening. So there is postnatal care yeah, that is low. And then uptake uh, is low uh, along the continent. So we need to find out why mothers are not going for postnatal care. Because uh, complications will be very common with a low postnatal care. Uh, then MMRI is high in older women. And then postpartum hemorrhage risk is also increasing with age. Then we also have high numbers mm, above the uh, desired target. So it's very important really uh, to look at um, uh, these key issues. Mm. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. From this presentation, you realize that there is actually um, uh, interventions done by, uh, um, by, by the government of Uganda. Uh, IPT, SCAN, these things are there. They are documented, but uptake is still very low. And this could be uh, because of cultural issues. Uh, this could be uh, because of um, uh, uh, education levels. Mm -hmm. Those things that are actually going to, uh, to, to, uh, to reflect so much in terms of attendance. So we have access issues. Uh, we also have uh, uh, technology and innovation because the ministry has been key in using mobile health units. Mm -hmm to bring the services closer to the people. Thank you. Thank you very much.